So I found um, uh, when I went to when I went to turn the water on um, to supply uh, hot water back up to the radiant heating up to the patch in my floor to test it, I found that the water wasn't going because the uh, the valve that supplies that particular radiant heating um, line is 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 broken. Not broken, but permanently shut off, closed because of this, which is a zone valve. This is broken because I had the thermostat on um, all night by accident. I think I burned out the little motor um, in this. So what this is is a zone valve. It's made by Honeywell, and the way it works is that's a little little motor on the top, and <clears throat> this this thing here, this hole, fits onto um, that pipe. So that that. Uh, look at my hand. That that pipe supplies the radiant heating up, radiant hot water up into the pipes. This little motor right there turns a valve right inside there on or off. So if the, if the basically what happens is if the if you turn the thermostat on, um, that sends a signal to that valve to turn on, and it also sends a signal to that pump to start pumping. So this pump starts spinning. It's there's an impeller inside. It sends the hot water up into whatever line, whatever pipe the thermostat is connected to, let's say it's that one, this um, uh, little motor turns on and it opens the valve, right? So the water is allowed to go up and pump through the, the floor. So what's happening is <clears throat> the little um, valve motor, the zone valve, is broken. So this thing here should spin um, when the thermostat is turned on, but it's not because this little motor is burned out. So I'm just going to replace it. It's it's super simple. There's um there's a a screw or a bolt uh, right there, and maybe one on the back. Yeah, right there. So you just um, unbolt those two from the zone valve that's in place on the uh, the radiant heating pipe, and pop it off, and then put the new one in, bed it in, and then reattach the the the, the bolts, and then should be quite straightforward. Right, so there's the Honeywell zone valve um, from the front. Now I can't see in the back. You can see right um, there. That's the one uh, bolt that I've undone already. There's another one in the back. I can't see it. So what I'm going to do is use my iPhone and reverse the uh, the video, and use the other side uh, camera camera from the other side to to see where I'm going. So um, kill two birds with one stone motor from or the valve zone valve from behind so I'll be able to I'm looking at that so I can see where the screw is otherwise it'd be impossible. Let's see if I can get my screwdriver in there. Good, nice. This works great. So that's open so I can just pop this off now. I'm gonna stop the video and try again from the front. Alright so there's the zone valve. I've undone both this the, the bolts so it should just pop off, wiggle it, and up it comes. Nice. <clears throat> so I'm just reversing this now. So I put the new valve, zone valve in, and um, this is I'm doing the the rear. And this iPhone is like super handy for this. So there I'm just um, using that reverse angle to um, be able to allow myself to screw in the, uh, the 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 nut. What I found as well was that um, this the the unit didn't bed in um, properly to the pipe because um, the valve was switched. Uh, off and this zone valve, sorry, the zone valve itself is set to open, so the two didn't line up. So what I had to do was, um, you had I just had to fiddle with the zone valve and twist it around to get it to fit on top of the uh, um, the valve itself. There was a little spine projecting projecting up from the uh, the pipe. I so I fit the zone valve on top of the little spindle or whatever it is, um, and then I rotated the the zone valve around. And, and was able to then get um, get lined up with the pipe, get it parallel, and then I was able to screw it in. So. The way this works is that little lever I was talking about, if you pull it, you can actually hear it um, go reverse back. Here it go back, or see it go back. What I'm doing is manually opening the valve, and then if you pop that up, you can manually keep the valve um, open. And no matter what you do to the thermostat, that valve remains open. And then if you want to go back to auto, auto mode, you flip it down. The thermostat is turned off right now, so there's no signal going to this um, uh, zone valve to say open up. But I can manually force it up. And I'm going to go do that and check my uh, water supply um, right now. 
in the in the pipes. I want to see if the, I want I want this valve to be open so that um, the pump will pump water up to my radiator. And then what I'll do because the I drained the uh, the the pipe that I'm repairing. I drained that I drained that yesterday, so I'm going to refill it. This is a, a manual refill lever. I push that up, and that will allow water to flow into the whole radiant heating system. So I'll do that manually, and then at some point it will be full, and I'll hear a splash from below, and that is the uh, that's a signal to me that the the whole system is is full. It shouldn't take more than I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. Okay, so it took yeah, it took about 15 seconds, and then there was an overflow into the drain below. Um, which was expected, so that's good. And that means my drain is now full. Sorry, my uh, my radiant heating pipe system is all full. And as long as I'm here, I'll point out a couple other things. See those little, um, that little thing there, and one here? That is like a, um, uh, an air release. So what you can do when you're filling up these pipes, you should open them a little bit. That one's hard, but anyways, open it up. That releases the air. So as the, as the um, system fills with water, it gets up to here and then dribbles out of it, and that means that the system is full. And then, Okay, so I reattached um, the, it's low voltage wires by the way, these are all low voltage, you can touch them, they, they won't harm you at all. I reattached the two reds, the two yellows um, from the zone valve, so there's power being supplied to that valve. I'm just going to go up and um, I've turned the thermostat on upstairs, which means it signals this zone valve to turn the valve on. So if I I've manually forced it on, so what I'm going to do is get in here, I'm going to flip it on to automatic mode or whatever. Here's the valve I took off. This is the lever, I couldn't show it very well when it was installed, but this is the lever that allows you to manually uh, adjust the status of the valve either open or closed. If it's open then hot water if pumped will flow into my radiant heating. If closed water does not. Um, and this goes open or closed. The valve goes open or closed based on the thermostat. So if the thermostat is on and it's higher, the setting on the thermostat is higher than the current temperature in the in the room then the thermostat will signal via these wires to this valve, zone valve, open the hot water valve and it does so. So if you want to manually force the valve open, you can use this lever. Um, and th it's, this is busted basically, so it doesn't hardly move. You can, it's moving a little bit, but it doesn't move back. Usually this is set on this side and you push it over and there's a spring that slowly drags the lever back. Um, if you want to force the valve open, um, you can push this lever over and then up into this lock position up here. You can see the little tab back there. Push it into the tab and it'll leave the valve open. Uh, so I'm just gonna dispose of this, it's it's broken. And the new one, I just tested it, um, this lever works works fine, okay? I turn the thermostat on in my room um, and uh, uh, and the, everything is working. So I'm gonna wait and see if water, just over there, if water starts um, coming out of my patch, we'll see.